Today on Down Round Threads, Meta's social media platform, 100 million users in four days. Is it going to take down Twitter? Well, by the end of this episode, you'll know. You're looking sharp today, mate. Here we go. <laughs> I knew that we were doing video. I knew that you were going to comment. I knew that we were going on uh, on video, but I, I thought that we might maintain our kind of aloof, casual, might, maybe we work at Atlassian kind of vibe, and you've showed up looking like you work at Freehills Lawyers or something. Well, point one, mm-hmm. haven't you heard that they've tightened the screws at Atlassian? Did you read that article about I Atlassian do, yeah. and Canva? I've heard, but like I three people sent that to me. And I was like, okay, thank you. Is it because we did an episode about it last year? I guess so. Secondly. I don't think it changes the dress code, though. <laughs> secondly. Just, just putting a pin in that. Company culture is, it's a fickle thing. Mm. No, we've moved, we've changed digs, yeah, as yeah, you can as tell you by can the video. It. Sorry, I'm gesticulating the video because now I just assume that everyone can see me. And we're now in the city. We're close to the CBD, the Central Business District of Sydney, the beating heart and soul of the economy of Australia, Uh and that just so happens that I need to make my week more efficient. So this morning I go into work, into the big smoke, into Wynyard, and I do all my kind of this and that. I do actually happen to dress like this a couple of days a week. Yeah. Because of this podcast, I've rearranged my schedule to go into, yes, a more corporate job on a Monday morning now before our podcast because we are closer to it. It's called efficiency in the media. I know you probably wouldn't come within kind of five kilometres square of Wynyard, but some of us actually have to keep our standard of living high. Hmm. Okay. Well, fair enough. I just think that, you know, I think it's curious that the moment we, well, start, the broad- can the moment we start broadcasting yeah, ourselves yeah, on TikTok, yeah. you start trying to look like bloody Patrick Bateman, American oh, Psycho dear. over here. See, you shouldn't be so concerned with aesthetics. Well, <laughs> I can say the same for you. I'm, this, is what, this is what I've always worn. You know, I think the average down round subscriber or listener would know who's real and who's just in it to... Put on appearances, you know. I think I think they get that. <laughs> As we mentioned at the top, we're obviously talking about threads today. But first things first, before we get into today's episode, interesting little follow up from last week's free episode, which was about ticketing. You may recall that we had like a prolonged section where we talked about the concept of queuing up for tickets. There were elements of it where it was about generating hype um, for in much the same way as people used to queue up for a box office. The experience of buying a ticket for a major event now still involves sitting there in a queue while your browser automatically refreshes. We did get an interesting bit of information I thought was worth sharing from a Downey, mm. a down round listener. Yeah, in the industry. Yeah, listener Dave tells us that another reason why you're forced to sit in a endlessly refreshing queue is that the banking infrastructure generally doesn't tolerate hundreds of thousands of people trying to buy a ticket at the same time. Mm. So, you know, that you can get on the blower and speak to your bank as a ticketing provider and say, we're going to have half a million people trying to buy a ticket at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. They say we can only really process probably about seven a second, which is a lot but not enough for that. So there's a bit of a bottleneck. Seven, six is 42, I don't know, 420 a minute. Take some time if you're trying to sell 100,000 tickets still. That's right. So anyway, that's a little bit of colour for for Taylor Swift fans who were uh, listening to our last episode. Hopefully you got a ticket. Congratulations all who did. Commiserations all who didn't. Yeah, RIP to to those who died. Mm -hmm. Mm. Anyway, this week we're talking about threads. Threads. Our subscribers will know that we did a paid episode last week about Twitter Mm. in which I suggested that now would be the perfect time considering all the chaos at Elon Musk HQ for Mark Zuckerberg to release his much-anticipated Twitter competitor. Mm -hmm. And Lo and behold. Yeah, the big brain eggheads they've got sitting at Facebook HQ came to that conclusion before I did. In parallel. In parallel, yeah. Oh, they could be down, down round listeners. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They could have been like, we were waiting. We were waiting till the end of the fight. But <laughs> but we listened to down round and we realized these boys know what they're talking about. James is right. we got to go now. we got, we got to pull the trigger. Point being, they launched threads. And apparently it was an expediated launch, right? Yeah. It's not like there's been reporting that suggests Facebook was looking or Meta was looking at the sort of weird chaos of 
the limiting, everything we the, talked about yeah, last week. Exactly, the rate limiting of on, on Twitter and so on, and said, okay, now now's the time to swoop in and do it. As you suggested, and it was. Mm-hmm. Boom, Threads is live. Threads is live. So, yeah, just to give a bit of context for people that haven't been paying attention to all this stuff, is Threads is Meta's new social network that sits alongside Instagram and Facebook, but mainly Instagram. It's kind of it's linked mm. to Instagram pretty closely, which is their text social media, meaning basically Twitter. And having looked at it and used it over the past few days, it's just Twitter. Yeah. Like they've they've basically cloned most of the sort of fundamental features that make Twitter Twitter. You can post text posts, you can post images, you can quote tweet people, mm. you can reply to individual posts, you can retweet stuff, although I think I think it's called like re rethreading or reposting yeah. or whatever. But good all, name, threads, good yeah, name. All the basic functionality is there, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll pull you up on something. It's not a Twitter clone, because that's now going to court, apparently. Oh yeah. Apparently it's so I'm not pulling you up. Actually, I know you know this stuff. But apparently it's basically just like the guts of Instagram with activity pub shoved on top of it. Yep. Which so which is like, you know, the open sourcey Open uh, source it's the same platform that um Mastodon is built on. Although the activity pub integration is not actually live yet. Yeah, yeah. You can't people don't give a fuck about that, but well some people do. So you know, it's like, yeah, the Fediverse, the Federated structure. Yeah, yeah. They, nobody, nobody wants to hear about that. No one yeah. No. They pl- they're planning to integrate like Federation or whatever. So you you have, you know, data portability, which has always been this dream of social media. But like again, wow. Shouldn't be mentioning that within the first five minutes of the pod, let's be honest. No. <laughs> Drop off numbers. No, people people, <laughs> people, are, people are logging off and you know, going back to their families. Now, you've just taken a victory lap. Brief. I'm, be- I'm being f- facetious about predicting the perfect time to be releasing threads. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I wasn't, but anyway. Let me, let me take you back to May 24th. Oh, okay. You six, got receipts. Six weeks ago. Yep. Do you remember what we discussed? Uh, we discussed text, mm-hmm. social media. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anything else? No, my mind is blank. You're going to have to enlighten me. We made predictions about which text-based platform would have the highest daily active users in the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is at a time, you know, there's a whole thing about like Substack, doing a Twitter clone. Mastodon, Blue Sky. All this, all this kind of thing. And we both made predictions about who would be biggest. Do you recall what either of us said? No, you know. It's not something that I – I don't look to the past. I'm endlessly driving to the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So, you know, accountability is just a handbrake on achievement. So just hypothetically, if I said I think that Meta Twitter will have the highest number of daily active users more so than Twitter, yep. what do you think you would have said to that, taking your mind back? <laughs> I think my response may have been somewhere along the lines of let's check back in 10 years. <laughs> I think it and might have been. Our, was correct. I think it might have been officially our first down round disagreement with a sting to really mark the occasion. And um, you said, "No, that's crazy talk." <laughs> Meta Twitter yep. will have more daily active users than Twitter in two years' time. That's wild. I would not. I would not accept that at all. We did stipulate that that was in two years' time from that episode. So now, one year, ten months, and two weeks' time. Do you want to update your prize or are you happy you're sticking with that? I don't think I would going to stick with that. And, you know, in the cold light of day, hindsight is twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. I do think it was it was perhaps foolish to doubt Caesar-esque drive of Mark Zuckerberg. Because, mm-hmm. yes. He's Caesar, Caesar and Mark Antony combined. We don't need to drag this out, you know. There's no need for a victory lap at this early juncture. No, but no, no. It's very early days. There's anyway, a, lot of, a lot of water to come under. Yeah, but uh, uh, Threads uh, launched and is now, you know, quote, unquote, officially the fastest growing consumer mm. platform ever. Right? And we'll dwell on that. So literally like two months ago, we were talking about the rise of ChatGPT as being the fastest, the most users within the shortest amount of time for a consumer product. They got to 100 million users within two months. Yeah which was huge. For comparison, TikTok was nine months. It took them to get to 100 million users. Instagram was two years. Threads has surpassed that now in four days. Caveat, caveat, caveat. Yeah, I mean, the obvious caveat here is, which is, you know, something I I should have contemplated more deeply in like thinking about 
what my predictions were. I said it aloud that like they can just tack the social graph on. Yeah, anyway. well, look, let's, you know, let's, I, no need to dwell on these things. They made it very easy to port over your Instagram social graph. They prompted every Instagram user to install threads on day one. And a lot of them actually took them up on that. It, they're very tightly linked now to the point that like you can't just go to threads and sign up for an account. I think you have to go via an Instagram account. You can't delete your threads without del- deleting your entire Instagram. Exactly. So once you're in, you're in. You're in. You're jacked in. Mm. No hope of escape. It's like being in the Matrix. I like it. Mm. And a lot of them took Instagram up on, on this incredible mm. offer <laughs> where it's like what if you had exactly what you have here except a lot more – Writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and fewer pitches, maybe. And yeah, ex- ex- maybe fewer pitches. Let's see how it plays out. Mm. And everybody's going to be a lot more annoying, <laughs> which is a big promise given coming from Instagram. So yeah, they've hacked their way to the top. But they're not at the top just yet. No, they're not. They're, they have not exceeded Twitter's daily active users, but they've taken a pretty massive chunk out of it. Yeah, in four days. In four days. <laughs> four days. So, yeah. But it's actually quite interesting watching what's going on here now. If anyone spent any time on threads on the first few days of, of mm-hmm. its operation, they played it pretty well in the sense that it was very easy to port over a lot of like really big public figures and influences and what have you. Mm. So, you know, immediately politicians were on there, journalists were on And they were on there a couple of days early. Yes. So a lot, especially like the celebrity and influencer world mm. and like musicians and what have you were invited on there early to like start posting and have some content ready for everyone when everyone arrived. Those people came over really quickly, including, you know, a lot of people who are not big Twitter posters, especially on like the influencer side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And started sort of posting, posting up. Story. J-Lo. J-Lo. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. She's there. Yeah. So that came out really quickly. Jenny from the block. <laughs> what I was impressed by was like the absolute speed with which people just started posting just like shit. Garbage, yeah. Like yeah. complete engagement bait garbage. Like what's one song you got playing all day long? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The best ever movie and why. Go. Yeah. Or like what time is it where you are? <laughs> it's eight it's eight thirty seven PM for me. <laughs> Let's get a global perspective. You know, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I, I just think shows how indomitable the human spirit is for, like, pursuing just raw content. Oh, yeah. And that's what life's all been about. You know, your classic thing. Cloud about, chasing. Your classic thing about, like, you know, humanity started with guys doing drum circles in caves. Yeah. And just vibing. There's, like, there's a straight line <laughs> from a guy vibing to a drum circle <laughs> in a cave in Europe somewhere. Mm. All the way through to someone posting, yo, what time is it where you are at? <laughs> and then just like a million 60 IQ people just replying, oh, man, I'm, it's, it's 4 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this but, post is about me. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking to me. Just like <laughs> pure sine wave brain, brain pattern. <laughs> the inverse of that is like the people having a whinge about it on um, Twitter in particular. Former blue checks have already pronounced the death of threads, which, by the way, I know I just went on like a yeah an extended vic- victory lap. I, I took a second. <laughs> there literally is still a lot of time to play out, and it may turn out that threads, you know, it doesn't work. Maybe the hype dies. Hype cycles, we all know them. Things come and go. I mean, our one of our first episodes was about be real. Not that we predicted that it was going to be a world-dominating social media platform, but regardless, we did an entire episode about it. Um, anyway, the former blue checks on Twitter are very unhappy about threads. It's just these these hot people with nothing to say, yep. realizing that they actually can't do posts. Yeah, the claim is that you you have beautiful influencers who now must traffic in words, text, words, and discourse, and they they're not quite ready for it. That is true to the extent that yes. I think there's definitely a lot of hot people learning their way in the world of words. Exactly. Um, A caption on its own needs to hit a bit harder than, um, you know, an image and a caption. A picture's worth a thousand, as they say. They do say that. However, I think there's probably maybe a little bit of, like, anxiety amongst the former blue tick elite who have amassed... The the word cells. The word cells. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Amassed these audiences on one platform, not 
to the exclusion of the other, but perhaps the other wasn't their medium, like the visual oh, yeah, medium well, of Instagram. Like it wasn't even the fact that you're it's it's built off the Instagram social graph. Yeah. So these people come in red hot, just like cavemen grif- gifted the the ability of speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have eighty thousand followers automatically. Yeah, off the rip. Whereas like people who have spent years cultivating a Twitter audience. Yeah. Who have 450 followers on Instagram because they're like, a, I got to go again. Because they've got a, a face like a, a smashed pie. And their posts on Instagram are like them and their kids and, you know, what have you. Exactly. Yeah. Just, it's not the medium. Over over a decade of building up their audience is all for naught. Yeah. It's a, it's a complete inversion of the power dynamic. We went back to the, the one from before. If you're a nerd in high school, yep. once again, the jocks wi- are winning. The jock, the jocks are winning. And the yeah. hot girls are winning, yeah. you know. It's like. That's it. There was a period where may- maybe there was a sense that they could transcend that millennia old dynamic. Mm. You can't get away from that. However. The jocks will win. There is an equilibrium that's be- probably being reestablished. I know we've gone like way abstract, way early. But like, that's for fine. example, I've always said that the visual medium is probably more suitable to me. You're, yeah, exactly. You're, yeah, sure. You're a man of pictures. When I was posting on social media more regularly, Instagram was my platform, and you know, you know, I amassed at my peak, I think, it was six thousand followers or whatever. Not, you've declined. I'm, not a huge amount. You've obviously. declined. Well, I haven't posted in years. But point being, it is interesting though that like, so I think I still got four and a half thousand followers. How many did you have on Instagram? Like a thousand or something. Like a thousand or something. But you've got more followers on Threads than I do by a long way. I think. What can I say? I'm a natural. The word cells came flocking. They looked for their shepherd. Yeah. And this in this strange new land. Well, I guess it's they're like looking at their Twitter list and being like and trying to like yeah, no, transfer that's, that's or whatever. A, obviously exactly what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um But whereas my visual audience, they didn't want to have a bar of what I had to say. <laughs> and why would they? You know, you you're you're putting vibes out into the world. You're not someone with thoughts worth contemplating. Nope. I'm the vibes guy. You're a vibes guy. You always have been. But I think it actually all incredibly abstract. Discussion aside, it also speaks a bit to like what's happening here as well. Mm. So one of the big initial controversies of Threads is that Adam Masseri, who is the head of Instagram and is also running Threads, basically came out and said hard news and politics are not really something that we want on our platform. Too much and negative it, energy. And this fo- this follows from like Mark Zuckerberg saying, I want Threads to be like a positive place a place of love, you know, he was talking in like that, whatever. And actually, like, Adam Masur is relatively candid in the fact that he was like, we're not going to be able to stop people posting about hard news. And, in fact, that's already happening. Like, all the yeah. news organizations came across. I mean, it's the moment you give people the ability to write 500-word posts, mm. they're going to start writing about, like, politics and, like, the war in Ukraine and, like, you know, they're going to start start sounding off. Yes, of course. Know? Gender ideology. <laughs> like there are people who would just like the moment the gates open, well, I yeah. need to post about trans people. Yeah, <laughs> on, exactly. On, um, well, finally. Yeah, exactly. I don't have to add an image. <laughs> Adam Masseri was basically like he expressed in his like threads on threads something that's pretty obvious, which is that Facebook, we've talked about this in other episodes, Facebook got a lot of growth out of letting people post news and comment mm. on news and do that kind of stuff on Facebook back in the day. But then it turned out to be way more of a liability than what they were getting from it. Mm. And this basically comes to the fact that Facebook have been moving away from news consciously for years. They would be delighted if it, if you couldn't post news on Facebook mm. at all and have, have to worry about Mark Zuckerberg being hauled in front of Congress to talk about the 2016 election, right? I, I don't know. I feel like they've obviously got some metric somewhere because, like, if they really didn't want news on Facebook, they would have just gotten rid of it. But there's some somewhere there's, like, a dial, which is time on site based yeah, around yeah, yeah. news content. At the moment is at 51% versus, like, all of the negativity, which is at 49%. And the moment that dial obviously switches down to, like, 49%, well, they just kill it, it, news on Facebook. I'm pretty sure they're, like, they're never going to stop someone posting something that unless yeah, it's, like, Yeah, a link. Legal. They're not going to ban a link. They're not going to ban it. They're just going to de-emphasize it. And it mm. seems like that's already happening. Like, mm. they really don't want that to be what Facebook is all about, whereas it used to be, you know, we're doing news partnerships. We're doing, like, yeah, this yeah. is, we want this to be the, the public square. It, it leads you to, like, a really interesting place because, you know, Twitter has always sold itself as, even, like, pre-Elon Musk, it is, like, 
the world's town square where people talk about stuff of importance. They really courted having journalists and whatever on platform. Mm. Like Elon Musk wants that to be what Twitter is now. He wants people to be talking about politics. Well, yeah, he's encouraging the the audio stuff and citizen journalism. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, he doesn't... Come in, listen to the news and hear about the latest thing. It's he, all news, news, news. Yeah, he, I mean, he doesn't want the Washington Post on no. there. Whatever. He, what he really wants is like... Mario Norfolk. Yeah, Mario Norfolk, like random, probably like slightly racist citizen journalists just yeah. like pounding the New York Times. Yeah. But he still wants to be like the public square. People talk about express their opinion and whatever. Mm. And basically what the Threads bet is, and I think it's like an interesting bet, and Mark Zuckerberg's idea is he's like, actually people do want a public square where they can talk about stuff. Mm. And like a lot of people want that. But the fact that Twitter has only ever managed to get about 250, 300 million people Mm. and that fluctuates shows that they kind of fucked that up Mm. and they didn't do it right. And we can get a billion people doing this and like using text as their primary medium. And his bet is that a billion people don't actually want, like politics is not their main thing. They would prefer- Which is, to be perfectly frank, like a pretty rational thing. Like most people- you and me, we probably we keep up with, and and you, the listener, you're probably across politics. You're listening to a friggin' tech business podcast. You're across you're, politics. You pay your taxes. You watch the news every now and again. Yeah, you're probably across some kind of. You're probably across tax and like how it works and you know how to maybe minimize it or maybe maximize it if you know you're that way inclined. If you're a fool, <laughs> but you know you're across things. But that's not normal. It's a bit silly to care about politics, if I'm perfectly honest. It's just another form of entertainment. In my opinion, sorry, this is a, maybe this is a bit hardcore. But, wow. you know, most people don't wow. care about politics wow. is what look, I'm saying. Look at this. No, but the, ho- the day-to-day, like he's in the front bench, like she's out of the front bench, you know. Oh, big gaff today. Oh, people don't respond well to this. Like the, the horse race crap. It's not normal to be interested in that. No, I, I agree with you, but I also... Th- the counterpoint is that a lot of people really care about politics when it's like weird culture war shit. Oh, and that's what yeah, Twitter that's politics. That's what I mean. That's politics as well. Mm. Like this is what like Twitter people really get into that. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I, the bet that Meta is making is that they can kind of transcend that. To be clear, it seems like Meta is super happy. They're like, we're not the free speech platform. Mm. We're like the conversations platform. Yeah, I mean, look, if they can get on, remember like Twitter used to be, and I feel like it's almost dying off now, the married at first sight, live tweeting, you know, people. Yeah, exactly, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. And Twitter has almost fallen off that because it's become so weird. <laughs> no, well, yeah, yeah exactly. It's and, and so if threads can pick up that, for sure, there's a huge no, market like, there. I think, I think that's what they want. They're yeah. like, we want when we say we want to be the public square or the place for conversation mm. for a billion people, we want people... In a perfect world to be talking about Pepsi and Pepsi products, <laughs> like there are product managers and like ad guys at Facebook that are like, yeah, baby, Threads is going to be the place where people engage with brands, yeah. talk about brands, and we can then target stuff to them. Although, you know, that's pie in the sky stuff. But I think that's their dream. Their dream is kind oh, of like- Of course. No, I think the, the main dream is, as you said, again, you said this six weeks ago, it's interesting that Twitter is kind of faltering on this text-based social media platform. And it's not like every other organization is like, oh, maybe that isn't a platform for us. Maybe like text is just not a good business model and not a way to monetize. In fact, they're plowing into it and everyone's trying to do their own version of Twitter because they see Twitter faltering. To Meta, it's like we've already got 100 million people. If they stick around and if we get to a billion, it's just more ad inventory. Oh, totally. It's more time on site, more eyeballs on a Meta product and more places that we can put ads, which is fantastic for our business model. No, totally. Like for them, it makes perfect sense. Mm. Because, you know, Twitter, as you said, I think it's a a good point, is that like Twitter has, aside from being all other sites of place, when, I don't know, a new massive record drops, let's say Beyonce puts out a new album, Mm. Twitter is where like a huge amount of that discourse about it happens. Mm. Like obviously there are people commenting on Facebook, people are posting about it on Instagram, but a lot of the conversations are happening there. I think that's that's what Meta wants threads to be. They want to have the conversation about the new Beyonce album. They want people to be live tweeting or live posted, live threading about the new Married at First, like the Married at First Sight Yeah, and finale. the Ashes. And, and that, like sport, they want all that stuff. And their bed is like, hopefully we won't have too much stuff about like, 
the 2024 US election in there. Yeah. Which I think is dumb. They're going to get so much, so much. Oh, of course. Of that. Oh, and the dumbest people in the world posting that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I don't, I think it's like folly for them to, and for him to come out straight out of the gate and say, this is not what this platform is for. Again, I actually loved it because, again, it pissed off all of the former blue checks. Yeah, that's totally. Like, yeah, yeah. like not only we've lost our blue check, we've lost our reach, we're being forced onto a new platform where yeah. we have no followers and we're already at a massive disadvantage to the hot people yeah. and I'm not even allowed to talk about my job. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And uh, don't get me wrong, it also pissed off the current blue techs yeah. who are like, oh, wow, okay, a platform where I can't be racist? <laughs> interesting. <laughs> but look, yeah, it's an interesting bet. I like, Will it know, last? Will it last? Well, and that's, yeah, I mean, that's the interesting thing. The hype is obviously huge. The hype is huge. Well, it's it, like almost literally the most hype thing ever. Like 100 million users in four days, yeah. is, it might be by the numbers one of the most popular things ever. Sure, yeah. Pull up the scoreboard, mate. <laughs> no, totally. But, like, can I hold the interest of people who are, like, Instagram posters? Mm. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, and already personal experience, it is a weird experience logging into a site that looks like Twitter because it's, like, obviously my entire social graph, you just, like, press, like, yeah, yeah, just follow all the people already, which was the huge advantage. Yeah. Probably should say that first. Unlike Blue Sky, um, Mastodon, whatever, where they obviously try and aid that user onboarding process by saying, like, what topics are you interested in? Like, I'm interested in tech. And so it's like, here are a bunch of accounts to follow, like auto-follow them all, this, that, and the other. But you have to rebuild your follower list. You gotta re- yeah, totally. Um, Whereas, like, in threads, you're already following all these people, so now you're following them again. Obviously, that's the huge sticking point that they, like, have a massive advantage yep. in. But it also is just kind of weird because... I didn't follow all those people on Instagram to like see or hear their takes. No, I've totally. Got a bunch of my friends from years and years and years ago, a bunch of bands, meme accounts that yep. on Twitter I'm following, yeah, news and tech and business and yep. sure, some funny people or whatever. It is very different and kind of weird. And all of a sudden I have to like re curate. It's more like an editing process where I'm just like, oh God, mute, 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 unfollow, mute, mute, mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, totally. And I think one of the, Things that I noticed straight away, because I had the same thing, automatically followed my Instagram thing, which mm. is incredibly different to my Twitter following, yeah. you know, people I went to high school with and stuff like that. Yeah. And there was a telling thing is that the people who are actually using threads and not just signing up for an account, but posting things mm. were all people that were on Twitter who are already trained to do that kind of posting. Yeah, yeah. And all the people that I knew from like Instagram, probably a lot of them really active Instagram users, just had no idea what to do with the format. Yeah. Like they didn't know what to post, whereas like it's on like posting Instagram stories is completely second nature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like, you know, you said that I had a bunch more followers. It's true, but it was all Twitter people. Mm. Trying to recreate their Twitter feed. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, is this actually something that people want to do? Because even like the old Facebook, because, you know, there was a time early Facebook, like 20, 2007 through to 2009 or something, where, like, people were posting, like, multiple Facebook statuses a day. Yeah. You know, and they were using it a bit more like MySpace or whatever and, like, actually well, – more like Twitter even. More like, like Twitter. Actually posting, posting. posting random shit. Yeah. And that period is gone. It, it's more like that Instagram cadence where it's like I'm only going to post, like, an Instagram square. Yeah, yeah. When, I actually, when it's something important, like I'm out doing something yeah, or, yeah. like, whatever. Some people are stories heads and a lot of people aren't. Yeah, Exactly. Like no. sto- stories is like is an interesting, uh, I assume, and I haven't looked into it, I assume there's like one of those power laws where it's like, you know, 2% of your followers post 90% of the Instagram stories or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it'd be something like that. So it's kind of like they have to butt up against that. On threads, there's no search function. Yeah, not yet. For posts. Well, they rushed it out, right? They recognized like you recognized now is the perfect time to go for threads and they just were like tie up the loose ends, get it out. But... I actually think that, like, that was a deliberate design choice. No search. No search for, like, posts or anything like that. So I think the deliberate design well, – le- well, why? Why do you think that? So Facebook and Instagram are, like, really bad for search. That's just, like, a fact. Mm. Like, they – on Facebook, it's so hard to use their search function to find anything useful. Like, it's it's incredibly – it's it's yeah, muted yeah. from what it used to be. Like, it's gotten worse over time. Mm. And I think that's deliberate. Like, they don't want people – 
searching for like public posts of like certain topics. Like, oh, I'm just going to search Facebook to find out what people are saying about the Super Bowl. Yeah, Facebook isn't really a searchable platform. No, no, and, and a lot Instagram you find is tough as well. I've never tried to search no, Instagram. No, you don't. Like the the only thing you have that really anchors you for searching on Instagram is like hashtags. Yeah, and that's useless. Yeah, see, I I think this is a big strength of TikTok, right? Is that like. Zoomers, their number one place to look up products is TikTok. Yeah, and like that is like their search engine for product and, reviews. And the, ser- and the search on TikTok has gotten better and better. Yeah, but that's it's literally like yeah. some people's go to place to search for anything. Yeah, TikTok's the first place they yeah. search. And even even on like Instagram, some of the like searchy sort of things is that you can look at all images from a certain location. Yeah, which is like. Why would you ever do that? Well, yeah, that was literally once again. I know I harp back to my degree a bunch, but it was it's it's just it was a funny point in time because the yeah. the degree only just started and only just existed. But that was what because um, Twitter had just been released, yeah, and that was what they said Twitter was great for. It was so imagine you have like a really good donut shop in your neighborhood, and you want to know I'm if the line it. is long for this was literally in a lecture, you know, yeah. and you want to know like if the line is long for. Eighth and Bloor Donuts. So you just go on Twitter and you type in Eighth and Bloor Donuts and you see a tweet that says, been waiting in line for 25 minutes. So now you know that the don- the line for the donuts is going to be long. And it's like obviously no one ever used social media that way, like for literally no. like real-time updates on really niche specific things. No. But that's location idea is like a kind of symptom of that. It's no, like, totally. Oh, people will use it to kind of but, as like a search engine for yeah, their natural yeah. surroundings. People use Google Maps as like a kind of a search engine. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like, no, totally. But the um, even like hashtags, which are like synonymous with Twitter and Instagram, mm. Twitter was like where they originally appeared and then they appeared on Instagram later. Mm. You know, there are people that still do use them a bit on Twitter, even though like it's been deprecated pretty heavily. But on Instagram, like who is actually clicking on a hashtag. The only Bots. reason you use it is to like hopefully get yourself sorted into whatever algorithm. Yeah, yeah. It's the same on TikTok. Down Around is now launched on TikTok. Yeah. Check us out at Down Round Pod. Yeah. We did that from our ticketing episode. I did like a hashtag Taylor Swift because we were talking about Taylor Swift ticketing. And all of a sudden, it clearly got put in front of a lot of – it worked algorithmically. Yeah. It got put in front of a t- bunch of Taylor Swift fans. Yeah. So I get it for like the reach side of it. But for like the search and actually finding stuff – Yeah, who's actually using if it you, If you tap on hashtag Taylor Swift on Instagram, it will show you what? A chronological feed of every spammy post <laughs> yeah. that has used that. It's absolutely useless for going through information. Point being, overall – I don't think Meta cares about search about and making information categorizable and accessible. They're way more interested in like mm. we want to do the TikToky sort of thing of like let's just give you a feed. That's what I was going to say. That's yeah. interesting. Is that the only feed is algorithmic? Yeah, totally. Like you do not have a choice at all. But that feels like a product decision to me. Yeah, I think we'll see search. I, I do think we'll see search coming. I feel like search is low hanging fruit. Yeah, but like but, potentially. But like, if, if you want to, if you want to integrate, yeah, like married at first sight and all this shit like that. That's true. Then yeah, like, yeah. I think you do need search. I feel like that's just they hadn't built it yet. Yeah. But but I I see where you're coming from. You know, it does add complexity. I'm interested in the algorithmic feed and whether they ever expand. Yeah. Like, I th- I will think, they do chronological? Will they do friends only? That kind of shit. I think they will. I think that I think the main reason that they didn't launch with that stuff is that they didn't want people to open their feed and just not say anything. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, true. They had to pump it. They yeah, had to that's pump true. it. So I think that that will come. And I'm pretty sure he actually, Adam Masseri, said that chronological feed was coming. Mm. But, you know, again, more than any other platform, Meta is going to want to keep it algorithmic where possible because they want you to have, A, an unlimited amount of content that it thinks you want to see mm. so it can, like, slot ads in. And they're not going to have ads for a while. I think it's a pure growth play for, for, sure. for a while. And it'll be interesting to see, like, where that fits into the general meta oh, ad inventory yeah, and see, what yeah. they think internally, what part of the advertising universe will this speak to that they're not hitting with Facebook and Instagram, mm. I think is like an interesting thing because they obviously think it's important. So it's very funny to think they're doing this as a pure spite play to destroy Twitter or whatever. Oh, no, look, at the end of the day, if they've got more placements, that will drive down the cost of advertising on Facebook, which will mean there's more demand, right? Yeah. Like as in like there's more... Sp- Places to put ads. Yeah, totally. Therefore, you, you can put ads more places. Therefore, the, the price comes down and more people see them, blah, blah, blah. More people 
then have access to the blah, blah, blah. It's an easy kind of money-making play from, like, the advertising side of things. And this is one thing actually people, like, flip out about in um, – in earnings and stuff, they see average average order value of ads go down in like Meta's earnings and be like, oh, they're making less money from ads. And it's like, that's usually a good thing. You want your average ad cost to go down. So yeah, exactly, more people can access what it. What that means is you're able, like you're finding more places to put ads. Once your like ad price starts going up, that means that you've run out of places, you, you've reached kind of peak ads and you're not kind of growing your product. Right? Anyway, whatever, that's a, a huge aside. But this is huge for Facebook, like another place to put ads. I also think, and it's a thought I've had for kind of a while, that like the Twitter scroll, like the Twitter feed, to me feels more akin to like TikTok than Instagram and whatnot has. Like I just, I, I almost feel like Threads is a better place for the algorithmic feed than Instagram is, just because of the legacy of Instagram. I agree with this because like, even though, and we've talked about this in the past, it turns out revealed preferences show that people actually do like seeing random shit yeah, in their Instagram feed or whatever because yeah. it does keep them on, on page longer mm. or whatever. But the expressed preferences and what people actually say, and it may be different across generations, but a lot of people still want Instagram to be just their friends. Yeah, and the people they follow because that's that's what they feel like personal connection, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and that's what it was all about. Like I want to see what my friends well, are you up de- to. Well, you're destroying an old product by yeah. introducing like reels and making it – basically making Instagram TikTok – is destroying the old product. But making threads TikTok is fine. Yeah. And like they're really pushing at no point have they said threads is a place to find out what your friends are saying. Yeah. They haven't pushed that argument. They've and as said, we said, like that was the weird thing when you open up threads is like all of a sudden you're following your friends again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Zabo came out and said, I want this to be a conversations platform that has yeah. a billion people on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which basically says to you straight out of the gate. This is a place where you open it up and see, like, the thoughts of the world. Yeah, yeah. Twitter has, has failed at this from day dot, even before Elon got to it, and we're going to be the ones that make this happen. So I, I guess the thing we should probably talk about is that, like, the response on the Twitter side of things. Oh, uh, yeah, freak out. Elon Musk and X Corp or whatever are suing Meta over threads. Yeah. For the allegation being that it's like, using their proprietary information. Yeah, yeah. They stole their IP. Yeah, they stole their IP of having posts on a page, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, it's going to be a tough case against yeah, yeah. Meta. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the allegation... Who I'd, who I'd say have a few patents on that kind of thing. Yeah, and the the allegation being that uh, also added on top is that like fired Twitter employees basically or people that were let go mm. during the Elon Musk downsizing then went over to Meta and worked on threads. Mm. Which Meta denies. Yeah, Meta denies. They reckon it's a team of 22 people or something like that. Yeah, whatever. And obviously there's, there's the funny aspect of like, you know, Elon Musk was prating around that these people that he was sacking were sort of useless yeah, yeah. extra luggage mm. that were weighing Twitter down. And now he's saying that they had so many vital secrets that Meta absolutely needed them to build this product, which is kind of funny. I, I, I get it strategically from Twitter's perspective as well, like X Corp or whatever, mm. which is that, you know, they, he needs to show that they, they're going to, like, aggressively defend mm. their turf legally yeah. and, like, whatever. Yeah. It ain't going to work against Meta. No. Like, with one of the most litigious companies in the world, like, with so much money. Yeah, totally. And, um, as I said, plenty of patents around, say, social media and feeds and posting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyway, and this is all obviously feeding into, like, the weird Zuckerberg-Musk yeah. fight, physical fight and, like, ideological fight that's, yeah, like, yeah. emerging and... I mean, like, it feels weird to be – here are all my – just to put them on the table as well so people don't think I'm just, like, standing meta. The p- problems with Facebook still remain in that use as a platform for genocide because they refuse to pay moderators in all of the languages in the countries that they want to be in. Pretty bad stuff. Obviously, weird radicalization engine, poor job of moderating as well as teen – suicide rates being up by X4 and um, self-harm being up by X10. I don't know if they were responsible for that, but maybe they contributed. Who knows? All that stuff, definitely bad. And Zuckerberg, weird unit. Oh, strange guy. Guaranteed, like 100% he, certified weird unit. He may he may be w- reaping the spoils of Elon Musk being the most hated guy in the sort of like tech world at the moment, yeah. or like the media and whatever, as he's like, his stature is rising. Yeah. But nothing can get past the fact, strange unit. Interesting guy. But he's racking up a lot of W's right now. <laughs> he's racking up some W's. Weird guy, but racking up W's. So with a caveat of a huge L, W's. Meta earnings have been great this year. 
Mm -hmm. It turns out, as we mentioned like previously, app tracking transparency, whilst they it de definitely impacted them and like they certainly have lost some money from it, turns out the incumbents benefit at the end of the day and all of the, the people who were not meta had a worse time of it. And so a lot of people moved from, you know, 80% of their budget with meta to 90% of their budget with meta because, you know, it turns out that they were the least effective because they have so much data. Yep. So anyway, whatever, their revenues are great. Their stock price is, is through the roof. They've had a, a fantastic year. Reels seems to be winning. It is competing with TikTok. It's growing. That's a big win. And he's had a personal glow up. He looks good. He looks fit. He's winning fights that, again, unclear who his opponent was and how that was determined. But, you know, he's doing jiu-jitsu. He's learning jiu-jitsu, yeah. Like that's, he, a bit, that's a big personal dub. He looks, he's a bit of a prawn. You know, he looks great from the... You know, body, great body. He's a reptilian looking guy. Yeah, rip the head off. The rest is great. And then threads. Like it's a right now, huge W. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's a $50 billion currently and L. expected to be at least $100 billion L with VR and metaverse. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yes, you did rattle off a number of dubs there, but the L, huge monetary value, bigger than most companies on earth. <laughs> in uh, Metaverse and VR, which, you know, may still pay off. And to be fair, he has of always said the Metaverse is 10 years away. Mm. You know, and we're kind of treading water and we're, we're helping build the foundations for it, blah, 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 blah. But it is kind of funny that they had two years of, like, PR promo for we're all going to be living in the Metaverse, mm. we're all going to be taking meetings in the Metaverse, I'm taking a selfie in front of the Eiffel Tower in the Metaverse. <laughs> yeah. And then... Actually, for the moment, our focus is more or less copying the fundamentals of a website that's been around since 2006. Yep. Copying another social media platform and just executing slightly better. Yeah. And then eventually chucking a bunch of ads next to it. That is their core product. Yeah. They're not a fucking VR company. They're not a fucking metaverse company. They don't know how to build this shit. Yeah, what yeah. they do know how to do is chuck posts in a feed and put ads next to it. You know, when it comes down to it, like they... It's been a long time since Meta has launched something like that. Mm. I mean, Reels is the is the most uh, recent one. Right? Totally. It's I mean, like, like Reels, definitely. You're right, actually. Um, but at least in terms of like on the the core business, like text side, this is a whole new product. It's a whole new product. Yeah. You know, and they've been really good historically at scaling, like Instagram. Yeah. It's, you know, it's difficult. When they bought Instagram, it was, like, minuscule compared to what it is now. Totally. They've, like, scaled it incredibly well, even if, like, most of the innovations have made it more unpleasant on mm. a, a consumer level. Well, yeah. and also it shouldn't be underestimated. Like, the ad network, it is hard to make an ad marketplace. It just it's, – it's a hard thing to do. I think we talked about it on the sports episode. KO, I saw an interview with uh, the head of marketing for KO – like three years ago, more, talking about how their algorithmic ads, it, it's, it's around the corner, man. It's going to be a big year for us. It's going to be a huge year. And they're still nowhere near releasing it. It's a very hard thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have it. It's a massive advantage. It's a fantastic part of their business. Like, obviously, it's their, it is their business, is the advertising network. They're able to, like, whip that out. I mean, Twitter and Reddit and places like this would kill to have something that good. Like, yeah. As, as the meta um, advertising network. And the fact that they can now just add inventory, just add another platform, spin up another platform, another place to put ads is just an insane advantage. Yeah. But that leads us to what's going to happen. Is the heat going to die out in two years' time? What platform will have the highest number of daily active users of the text platforms? I think this probably will have more like more than Twitter. And I think mm. it's pretty clear that like it's hurtling towards that place. It will have it may have more than Twitter by the end of the month. It probably will. Yeah, it'll have more users, it will have more and like probably make more money than Twitter does. But the two year timeline actually changes thing. If I had said if six weeks ago I had said in two months time <laughs> what'll be bigger, I would probably be right. But two years is the weird number. Yeah, two years weird. I, mean, I think what will be interesting for them is that whether they can actually make it a meaningful platform mm. that, like, you know, is where culture happens, yeah. let's say. Because Twitter is always really punch above its weight in that regard. Yeah. I think, it like, they did really well at getting – we've said it time and time again. They couldn't monetize this for whatever reason, but they may have had a much lower monthly active users than your average 
than some of the, the big dogs like Facebook mm-hmm. or whatever. But the people that were on there and like posters were orbiting around, important people. You know, the most important journalists, politicians, mm. you know, major brands doing announcements. Yeah, countries did announcements Countries, on exactly. Celebrity beefs, that sort of stuff. All that stuff was on an outsized level was happening on Twitter. Yeah. Is Threads going to be able to replicate that aspect, I think, is a more open question. Mm. Like, is it going to be the place where a, a journalist will be talking on screen and have, like, their Threads mm. at, sitting on screen? Is it going to be the place where, like, you know, memes and trends are born. Well, right, right now their threads at though is like a random number. Yeah, yeah, totally. Again, a product that has just been launched. That's like which number you were in terms of like who signed up first. You still have an at, which is just your Instagram one. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Why is that number a thing? I have, to, I have no idea. It's like, oh, you were the 154,300. Because that's what you click on on someone's Instagram profile to, to go to their threads. That's right, yeah. It's like a weird, I, I don't know what why that matters. To me, that feels like just get it out. Yeah, probably. Like a unique ident- – like that's an internal unique identifier per user that in the database or whatever. Yeah. And it's just like just use it. Just yep. use that. Yep. But, yeah, will it, will it be the place that – Will it be the place where stuff actually – or is it just going to be a place where it's like you read brand posts, you can reply to celebrities as one of 1.5 million other people who have replied to that specific celebrity? Because mm. it was also, you know, one of the things that made Twitter really tick – is that you could see like a, a celebrity or a journalist or whatever reply like horribly hateful abuse at them and they'd probably see it. Yeah. That was the secret source. <laughs> you could see the way people really think. You could like talk to anyone mm. and you'd run a real chance that they'd see it. That doesn't really happen on Instagram because like the scale is too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a broadcast channel. You look at any anyone, they've got literally 50,000 comments on everything. Yeah. Is Thread just going to be like that? Where it's just like a complete wall of noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Or is it going to be a place where like actual conversations and discourse happen? I don't know. But in terms of just like raw numbers, revenue, profit, I think they're going to smoke Twitter yeah. and really quickly. Yeah. Does that turn into like cultural power? Does it actually become like the place where people have conversations? Or is it just like a sanitized thing where you can look at cool stuff, never really reply? The vast majority of people don't post anything, scroll through, whatever, you know? Mm. The number one thing that might get in the way of it being bigger than Twitter in two years' time is it hovering around 200 to 300 million users and Facebook thinking that that's not big enough and shutting it down. Yeah, that, that, that could I, be it. I think that that's like literally the only thing stopping it from yep. beating and Twitter just like surviving. Yeah. It's worth mentioning that like they did an announcement where it was like they said how many users they had and how many posts had been made. Mm. And they said 70 million posts had been made on threads thus far. This was well before they got to the $100 million mark or whatever. And I remember looking at it, and I can't remember what the the user number was at that point, but it was like less than that. Mm. And I was thinking like, that's not that many. And that suggests to me that like a lot of people have signed up for it and been like... Oh, totally. No, not for or me. Well, most, or, and yeah, a lot of people don't have... A and, lot to say, but and the no, people, right. and, and the people that wanted to post, they've probably only done three or four posts. You know, on average, it was only a couple of posts per person. Yeah, because if you're like a celeb on Instagram, like you have to commit to it basically, and you're used to getting five thousand likes on a photo you post, and you arduously think over something to post on Threads or not, or just fire one off, and like a big post on Threads is hundred and fifty likes. You know, you don't get the dopamine. No, not of the five thousander. Yeah, and you persist with a couple more and you're getting an 89 and a 250 and yep. a 300. Like it's just not the same as banging out a hot selfie or like posting like just basically going half live and punching out 25 stories in a row and seeing that you got 16,000 views on each one. Just hits different. It's true. But let me just say one of the posts that came straight out of the gate within hours of uh, – Threads launching mm-hmm. was a post that read from like an Instagram influencer. Deep conversations with someone who understands you are everything. And within two hours, two and a half thousand likes. Nice. That's the future. Yeah. I do have to ask you, mm. going back six weeks. Yeah. So, yes, obviously, as we've established, you had Twitter as going to be number one. I had Threads as 
It's going to be the number one kind of text platform. Look, get on with it, whatever you're trying to say. Well, I had Twitter as number two. Mm. At number two, you didn't have Meta Twitter or Threads. Yep. You had Blue Sky. Can okay. You, can you talk me through that? Um, well, look, with the benefit of hindsight, I would, I would probably not put it quite so highly. Mm. I believe it was you who said to me that uh, Blue Sky has been mastodonified. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of it's it's been a little bit mass donified now. Look, what I think has become incredibly clear is that immediately it seems like, as I mentioned before, Meta has sort of absorbed all of that. I'm going to be unfair and say like normie discourse. Mm -hmm. Let's say in the future, I'll paint you a picture. Meta takes all of that, like talking about reality shows, mm. talking about like major sports events, concerts, album releases, all that kind of conversation that Mark Zuckerberg wants to live yeah, on yeah. threads. Twitter remains the place where politics, geopolitical disputes, that kind of stuff, you know, you know, slightly right wing stuff. Yeah. That's the way Elon Musk wants it to be. Mm -hmm. He would love to see posts from like guys with like marble statue mm -hmm. pictures talking about, you know, why we why can't we build cathedrals anymore? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. let me just say, if if you guys have seen the gigantic Vegas sphere, we can build cathedrals. Yeah, yeah. They want neoclassical buildings where like the pillars are just there to look good as opposed to being structural. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Anti anti brutalist discourse mm. or whatever. So like that stuff will remain on Twitter, I admit that, like, that leaves a very narrow gap for things that Blue Sky can do. Mm. It's going to be, like, people who want to talk about the stuff that's on Twitter but don't like the particular Elon Musk flavor of it. Yeah. Which, as again, I will admit, probably doesn't make for a platform. Yeah, more um, of a Discord kind of channel of, like, yeah, funny-ish posters who are uncomfortable. I think, I think it's, it's, it's big hope as a platform and I don't think – it seems incredibly unlikely that it will ever achieve the heights of what Twitter did. Mm. It might be a platform but not a business. Well, yeah, that's it. Its best hope is that Meta is going to be and like Threads is going to be so repressive to that kind of conversation and so just a Algorithm, just like TikTokified kind of algorithm of We're stuff. just like a wall of like noise mm. that it can still be the place. And like tw Twitter is so dysfunctional and weird and full of like – little Hitlers, that, like, that's, you know, how they have. But, again, is that, like, a platform or is that just a website? Well, it's certainly not the number two biggest text platform in the world. No. And, you know, what? I regret I regret my comments. Well, because the reality is, like, there's, there's just n very little reason to post on Blue Sky. Yeah. And I think, look, one thing that may come out of this as kind of like the doomsday scenario is it turns out that this kind of platform doesn't have a reason to exist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can say that as well. There's no real incentive to post on any of them. There you are, kind of need everyone on one. Like yeah, that, yeah. I guess that's the thing with Twitter. It's like you need everyone to be on Twitter. You like you need the psychos. You need the right wingers. You need like those moron boomers. Like, you, need, you need the like water the, drips. You need, you need the need tankies. You need, you need like... the tankies because like to post whatever you want to post, you kind of do want to at least like touch the orbits of everyone and get some psychos in your comments. Like get random likes from people you're like, oh, you definitely didn't understand what I was tweeting about. You just need it. You need the energy. Yeah, yeah. And, like, it could well turn out that this weird text platform was just, like, a weird moment in time where Twitter mm. kind of scratched that itch, but that itch doesn't exist anymore. You know, and for most people, weird, incoherent comment threads beneath TikTok videos, that's all the commentary they need. <laughs> that's the only text comment they need. You've seen like the comments on TikTok, I assume. There's no, like, they're completely out of order. Mm. They're like, it doesn't, oh, no, there's, there's it no doesn't even make yeah, sense. Yeah. There's nothing going here. Maybe that's completely fine for most of the population these days. Yes. Yeah, and all the, these eight companies, including Meta, chasing that Twitter dragon of like the way it was from like 2008 through to like 2015, 2016. Mm, the town square. Is completely not the way that the world is going to be in the future. Mm. But anyway, we'll wait and see. Maybe the brand hell that Threads is putting onto it is the way it's going to work as well. So. One thing I will tell you, yep. I don't know if it means anything, but commentary on skywriting in Japan, much more popular on Threads than it was on Blue Sky. I actually just had a thought come to me. I, I bet they don't have skywriting in Japan. They wouldn't I agree. Like, how would they do the calligraphy with clouds? No, it's too intricate, for sure. <laughs>
Welcome to Down Round, the podcast about tech business and culture. I'm your host, James Hennessy, and this is my co-host, Raf Dixon. I hate to do the sales pitch straight out the gate, but this is so important. For just $7 a month, you can get two episodes a week of incredible tech analysis. We may not take ourselves too seriously, but the analysis is second to none. You could literally run an investment fund off the advice we give. The alpha is limitless. Why wouldn't you pay seven bucks? You're leaving money on the table. <laughs>